There's no such thing as a wrong note and you can make any note work with any chord. So I'm going to show you what exactly I mean by that. And I'm also going to tell you how you can use this to your advantage when you're playing any song on piano and when you're trying to cover up mistakes as well. I really think there's no such thing as right versus wrong really when it comes to this. It's really just about kind of there's weak decisions and there's strong decisions when it comes to doing chord progressions and finding notes to fit with each chord. It's really less about right versus wrong. So this is a type of chord that I'm talking about. If I'm playing a jazz piece and I land on this chord, it kind of sounds a bit off. You don't really know where it's going. You're a bit confused by it. It's a bit weird because it's a bit dissonant and the notes don't really make a lot of sense and add up. But then if I was to play this chord directly after it, it starts to make a bit more sense. That second chord is the chord that comes then and gives it a bit of a place. All those notes start to make sense. A lot of people who play jazz or even classical can relate to this where they're trying to learn the piece note by note on sheet music really slowly. Sometimes when you're trying to just figure out like what notes go together, you finally get the chord and you play it. You can sometimes feel like it sounds wrong or off, but then whenever you gradually learn the whole piece, it sounds fine. That happened to me, I think, a lot when I was playing the higher grade pieces. And I think this example demonstrates that pretty well. It's mad when you play those notes isolated by itself. It's incredible what the notes after could potentially do to it. Another way of looking at this whole idea is you can just validate technically every note, especially in what's called horizontal composition versus vertical. So vertical being the notes just all stacked on top of each other. Horizontal being what chord or notes come next. When it comes to the motion of things, you can validate every note that you've played before that may at one stage have seemed wrong or incorrect. And I think it's good to set yourself a challenge of playing some bizarre chord and seeing where you can take that or where you can validate it. Or in other words, how you can bring it back home. You'll get kind of what I mean maybe later on. Another example is combining B major with G7. This sounds completely off because there's a, a lot of dissonance happening right now where you have F sharp, you have F, and you have G, all these notes that are spread out that don't really work. But if you bring this down and this up, it kind of sounds nice then. <laughs> Doing stuff like this, it, it leaves you really open to what you can do in terms of improvisation for right hand melody notes because we've we've just successfully made these three notes sound really nice and make sense rather than saying right this mad chord here, I'm never going to play that ever in my life and I'm just going to strike that out of my musical knowledge. You should be saying, right, how, how do I actually make this make sense or how do I validate this or justify my decision for playing all those notes at once? So sometimes I just kind of play different six chords and seven chords <laughs> and mixture of like minors and majors and just kind of see where we end up and then kind of just combine different chords like And you should just do this over and over again and see where you end up and see if you can just search for that kind of safe spot then <laughs> whenever you're on your big voyage of uh, random musical kind of jazz chords. And just set aside time for yourself to kind of give yourself freedom and treat piano like it's a, it's a playground because it's not supposed to be a, an instrument that is like 
right or wrong or oh you've made a mistake you played the wrong notes here you should be giving yourself freedom um, it's about expressing yourself at the end of the day well like like any instrument is is supposed to be See that chord there after that string of other chords that kind of felt like it was finished <laughs> but there none of this has been pre-planned i'm just kind of riffing all of these chords that i'm playing as well are in my free chord bible is what i'm calling it that you can just download in the description there and it will give you just all of these chords and also the scales of all of them that you can then look at and just practice and, and use for other pieces as well it's uh, it's a really handy document to have and it also gives you the relative minor of each key also the most common chords of each key as well so definitely go check that out but um you see that big string of chords i was playing there like i don't have a clue what key i was in or <laughs> what different keys i was drifting in and out of i wasn't thinking about that in your practice time you should have segments like that where you just give yourself the freedom to do that um, and it will just it will just develop you and another thing that will develop you is if you want to kind of play more things of this nature look up jazz standard pieces like Ella Fitzgerald and Miles Davis even Nora Jones as well a lot of singers that would just kind of use all these different chord progressions and different sixes and sevens and it stretches you to learn these different chord variations and you'll also find that they combine different chords a lot of the time like that's a b flat and a c minor to summarize this i don't think you should ever reject a note from a chord really always be experimenting this particularly applies in your own improv and even when you're covering pop tunes i did a whole video on how to cover up your mistakes but this topic that i'm talking about completely backs that up watch the whole video of that down in the description if you haven't already it just kind of teaches you that even when you play a note that's not necessarily in that key that you're in who's to say that you're not using that as like a doing a chromatic scale for your own rendition of that song people shouldn't judge your decisions of what you play or how you decide to interpret a piece so keep all of those tips in mind and try out that exercise and let me know how you get on in the comments because you might find that you've come up with a really nice progression, even if it's just three to four chords that just sound really good together. All of this is, is really developing your ear and will make you a better musician in general. Of course, I'm not the person to come up with this idea that there's never any note wrong in a chord. I'll link this video I was looking at earlier today about uh, Herbie Hancock was, was interviewed about playing with Miles Davis one time and he was describing an incident where they were both playing to a crowd together and Herbie Hancock plays this like, like terrible chord. He says it was a completely wrong chord in his description. And he froze and put his hands on his head. He felt awful because it was with Miles Davis and now Miles had to play with that. And it was in front of a whole audience as well. Miles Davis stopped, took a couple of seconds and then played a string of notes that made Herbie Hancock's wrong chord make sense and he kept going. Herbie Hancock said it took him a couple of years to even realize what just happened there. Miles Davis didn't hear that as a mistake. He heard it as something that, that just happened and he just took that as his responsibility to come up with something that made it make sense. So Herbie Hancock was saying it taught him a very big lesson, not only about music, but also about life. We can look for the world to be as we would like it to be as individuals. This idea to make it easy for me, we can look for that. But he was saying that the important thing is that we grow. We should have open enough minds that allows us to take any situation that we've landed in and make something constructive happen with it. And with that, that's a very wholesome way to end this video. I hope this was a help. Let me know if you want more kind of 
theory type of videos like this. I don't often do these theory videos because they're not my strong point. I prefer to just give you shortcuts to learn piano quickly. I suppose this is though a shortcut, like just if you kind of take some time and, and practice this skill, it's it's helpful for your ear. It will be helpful for playing with other musicians as well and just give you a better all around understanding of music in general. So let me know how you get on. Definitely try that trick with uh, messing around with whatever chords you, you want. I also am offering one-on-one -on -one tuition now, so that's all down below. The details are in the description there. You can just book a call with me if you want. So I hope that helps and let me know what you want to see more of on this channel.